Now, a couple of days before Shadow Keeps launch, and Flox and I have been steady playing Destiny Strikes Back. Hi, Flox, in the chat. Hello. Um, and I'm very excited. There's a lot of YouTube videos. Like I saw, Dado had some stuff. Aztec had some stuff. But I'm trying not to watch it. I waited this long. Might as well go in as blind as possible. Blinder than Eris. Um, and I wanted to do this with her, but schedules and whatnot, work and everything. Plus, on Monday, Destiny is going down for 24 hours, including Destiny 2. All of Destiny is shutting down. They're shutting the studio down. And Bungie's going to have to go get some Cambodian breast milk so that Shadowkeep can launch on Tuesday. So what I'm going to do is create a brand new character so we can relive the opening of Destiny and see... Like how the uh, beginning of the game uh, looks now, kind of reflect on it, um, and then I'm gonna hop into my main character, and we'll go into the dreadnought and just kind of poke around at some stuff. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun. It should be nice to reflect back. Um, by the time you guys are seeing this live on YouTube, it'll be Monday. I'm putting this up, so 24 hours from right now, hopefully we'll be in Shadowkeep. Oh, fingers crossed. I don't know if you can find Cambodian breast milk in the Cosmodrome, but they're going to try. Okay, the original screen right here. Now, uh, as I've said before, warlocks are nothing but dirty hobos wearing blankets all day. Hunters uh, suck ass, and they try too hard. And titans are obviously the best thing ever created. So even for my alternate character, I will be a titan. Uh, you know, I never made anything outside of an Exo, so let's create an Awoken, and let's, I see what we're going to try to do here. We're going to try to create Zavala Jr. So, let's just, we got to find, oh, okay, well, that's kind of bald. That's kind of bald. Man, Awoken have some weird options. Oh, that, look at that head. That's a good Zavala head right there. All right, Zavala's a little lighter than that. Oh, that's a good Zavala. Oh yeah, there we go. Now, now we're getting into Zavala territory. I don't remember what Zavala's eyes look like. <laughs> uh, we'll keep it. We'll keep it basic. All right, so I think we have our Zavala Jr. People in the chat are being blown away right now, not realizing that Zavala was awoken the whole time. How do you think he had the blue skin? Hello. All right, here we go. Nantox reacts to Destiny 1. Oh. Rip Activision. Hashtag fuck Activision. Matt Damon, the first guardian.
crazy because I remember this, but I don't, you know? Like, I remember them landing on Mars. That's right, they find a traveler. We called it the Traveler. The Speaker! And its arrival changed us forever. Great cities were built on Mars and Venus. Mercury became a garden world. Human lifespan tripled. It was a time of miracles. We stared out at the galaxy and knew that it was our destiny to walk in the light of other stars. But the Traveler had an enemy. A darkness which had hunted it for eons across the black gulfs of space. Centuries after our golden age began, this darkness found us. And that was the end of everything. But it was also a beginning. Oof! <laughs> Random happy horn unlock. Jesus. What did take away the weight of the dramatic moment, Destiny? I know that's only because I'm making a second character, but that's really funny timing. <laughs> the darkness came and killed all life. Happy horn unlocked. You really don't get much more lore than that, initially. This looks fantastic, by the way, even now. go the birth of our guardian 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 eyes up guardian work you're alive you don't know how long i've been looking for you i'm a ghost actually now i'm your ghost and you well you've been dead a long time so you're going to see a lot of things you won't understand This is fallen territory. We aren't safe here. I have to get you to the city. Hold still. Don't worry, I'm still with you. We need to move fast. Okay, so right away I have a couple of questions. Now, for all my uh, Destiny uh, lore heads out there. Survive long out in the open like this. Let's get inside the wall. When the ghost revived you. Were you like a zombie corpse, basically, like rotted away? If we were dead for a long time, we wouldn't we be all decomposed and, and gross? So when the ghost revives us, does it like, you know, make us look normal? Close up bullet holes in your head? It's gonna be really interesting as well to go back when Shadowkeep drops. I didn't bring you back just for you to die again. We have to move. 
because they're going to be making a new version of this mission that we will get to play as a new starting point when a new light drops. So playing this version and the new one will be uh it'll be good. There's something about the lighting as well. We are going to die out here. The lighting of the original game will be safer inside. Definitely seems I don't to me it seems a little bit better than it does in part two. I don't know, it's tough. This feels a little bit darker okay. and I need to find you a weapon before the fallen find us. A little bit more real, more grounded. Quiet. They're right above us. Hang tight. Fallen thrive in the dark. We won't. We need more light. I'll see what I can do. I got that one of these hardened military systems. And a few centuries of entropy working against me. Found a rifle. Grab it. Good old Kostov. I hope you know how to use that thing. Still one of my favorite guns in all of Destiny. This basic, basic Kostov. What was that? Still sounds and feels very uh, crispy. inside oh wow they really like tutorialize to this degree like look at that lighting right there that is like really eerie and stuff like that got my first shotgun trip mines don't touch them Oh boy. The fallen have a tighter hold on this place than I thought. Just a little bit further. Let's hope there's something left out there. It's amazing to me, like going back and replaying this. Uh, I think when the game launched, a lot of the impact of this opening was lost because by this point, most people who played Destiny had done this three times. But going back and revisiting it after all this time has passed is like, this is a really great opening. Like it looks great, the mood, the atmosphere of the of the uh, Cosmodrome. <clears throat> a little bit of like the oblivion in a much smaller scale of like you're in this dark oppressive place and then you come out this here and here goes the world you know be something we can fly out of here and at this moment the game seems like oh my god the possibilities are endless just like when you played oblivion and you left that prison it felt like i can go anywhere i can do anything incoming
fallen ships this close to the surface. Move! Run, run! I'm picking up sides of an old jump ship. Could be our ticket out of here. little uh lunge at least to begin with this melee attack okay. I keep wanting to hold a uh, circle and drop my rally barricade too much too much too whoa that guy just popped in clear them out Good shotgun has some good range. All right, let me see if I can get us out of here. All right, we get our ship for the first time. Default Guardian ship, still one of my favorite designs in the game. It's been here a while, hasn't made a jump in centuries. We're lucky the fallen haven't completely picked it clean. Will it fly? Oh. I can make it work. You hear our voice? The guardian who spoke? They really need to full time bring that back. a stranger watching us from afar another thread just dangling that uh, destiny has yet to like really come back around on and I did see an interview uh, earlier in the year with Luke Smith kind of talking down the stranger in that mystery I mean like who cares and, like I kind of care I would I would kind of like to go back and go full circle on her and and the, the story threads that she leaves dangling for us to find out. Stunning intro, man.
Welcome to the last safe city on Earth. The only place the Traveler can still protect. It took centuries to build. Now, we're counting every day it stands. And this tower is where the Guardians live. Yeah, I think we just take over right from here. That's where we meet, you know, you see other players. I remember that's where you could play the co-op for the first time. Hop in other people's games. I'm sure everyone's all excited. Like, oh my god, I gotta hop in, join your team. Well, let me look at your guy. Whoa. Yeah, the uh, beginning of Destiny, man. A lot of memories. A lot of nostalgia. Like, really, really crazy nostalgia. Um... And I'm really interested to see this mission remixed when New Light comes out and, and what they change about it. Like, I wonder if the dialogue will change, uh, what that whole process will be like to onboard uh, new players who are going to be playing for the very first time. Um, and even people like me who've played a billion times and just want to relive that opening um, just because just I'm curious. So... Oh, look at this quest progression. Oh, Destiny 2, please get that quest progression. It's such a nice looking, such a nicer looking way to do it. Like, let's just take a look at this. Like, look at that. Look at how nicely structured all this is. Bring this all back. But yeah, I hope you guys uh, stick around and uh, enjoy us playing a lot of Shadowkeep. When it comes time to unlove tell me the we've woken the hive mission is that a, is that the spot the then that was a temple of crota you ever wish we'd never woken the hive oh think of all the fun we've had with those guys though and right here is where we'll be returning uh october 1st when shadow keep drops um the moon Here it is. Here's the moon in all of its old splendor and glory with the fantastic Destiny 1 lighting, man. I, as nice as I love the frame rate and the PC version and everything maxed, uh, um, you know, maxed out, like the lighting in this game gives it a very different feel and it just hasn't been replicated. See if I remember my navigation correctly. This is that back platform right here. Yep, where all these guys were. Oh wow, look at the laser dodging. Everyone should log into Destiny every September. I know, right? Destiny 1 still has a lot of great to it. Here it is, the good old Hellmouth. Everyone's favorite. I remember playing in the Hellmouth so long, man. So much days of like farming and just exploring. Wondering like what's down there. When you're finally able to go and fight Crota. But for as many hours as I played Destiny 1, I, I was actually pretty inconsistent with like keeping up with it in between the major launches. So like, if you look at my Destiny 1 exotics, like I don't have a lot. Um, considering the hundreds of hours 
literally hundreds and hundreds of hours I've played. But, you know, I know people who play Destiny 1 for thousands upon thousands of hours. So it's like, my playtime is still like nothing compared to their... I do think it's interesting because the moon in Destiny 1 was obviously the first real location that everyone got to go to after Earth. And as such, it's a low level location. So having the moon come back all this time later, but as an end game location where enemies are going to be like beyond our level and we're going to be having a tough time. I think it's, it's pretty cool. It's a neat aspect of the DLC that not many people are talking about. point I'm just going so deep inside the moon let's just keep going I wish everyone, I wish Bungie had the time and space to just have dropped all of D1 into D2, at least most of the patrol zones. I 100% agree with you. And what I'm hoping is now that Bungie has kind of pulled back and they are in control and they also have their own budget, their own time and investment, I have no problem with them taking the Destiny 1 patrol zones and remastering them, if you will, like the moon is going to be. And making those the new locations they keep adding throughout the next couple of years of Destiny 2's life cycle. Like, I won't fault them for that. Like, I know people will be like, oh, you're making us pay for retreads. And it's like, at this point, if they are, if they can do to the other patrol zones what it looks like they are going to do with the moon, I'm okay with that. Like, I love these places so much. I'm so comfortable with them. Uh, so to see a remixed version of them... Like Venus, if they read it, Venus. Um, I would be game all the way for it. 
Yeah, and I, I don't think they should have taken it away as well. But, you know, we have to keep in mind that um, there are aspects to Destiny's history, its development problems, uh, Activision being a huge part of that. When it came to Destiny 2, a lot of changes were put into Destiny for the sake of dumbing down, making it more casual, etc., etc. <clears throat> so I feel like a lot of those decisions got made early on and in poor judgment. And as faulty as it was when it came out, I'm at least happy that we are in a timeline where Bungie is in control of Destiny. They're independent. And hopefully going forward, they can start having a lot of neat callbacks to the original in meaningful ways. And I think that will be really cool. Oh god, I'm getting chased. Oh god. But they have to reset every few years. True. But I, I do feel like... Um, the thing about the resetting that's going to be interesting is... With this new seasonal approach... Is that... We have that artifact. And the artifact's going to have mods and powers... And it's own light level. And that itself will be what resets. So we'll always be 750 or whatever the new max is. 960 a thousand whatever but that artifact is going to be a way for them to implement a power curve that is direct and not relying on powerful gear drops and i think it's definitely an experiment that they're going to use to try to see how far it can go um my auto rifle is actually pretty far along i just had to kill a few more knights yeah, overall i think it's just really i think shadow keep is a big step in the right direction Everything they're saying is the right things to say. Um, all the Vidox and, and their blog post and their transparency. Like, uh, you know, despite some of the changes they're making, at least they're talking about them. Whereas before, they would just make a change, not say anything, and then kind of, I don't know. Fucking deal with it, guys, I guess. So, hopefully this is the start of something new for them.